Well, well, well. Look who decided to show up. Me. I, I decided to show up. It was me that was gone. Yeah, guys, I'm back. Here we are, another tutorial. I know it's been a second, I'm really sorry. It's been too long. I've been busy, okay? Been working on a lot of things, a lot of changes, a lot of new things, all exciting things, all good things. But I don't want to ignore the fact that you guys have been begging me for tutorials on my latest two songs. And I know, I'm that late. I've released two songs and no tutorials on them. I'm lame, I know. But I appreciate the post fam, because you guys are patient and patience pays off. So I released Deja Vu and Shut Up, two of my new songs, and I haven't put out any tutorials yet. You guys have been asking me on DMs and comments and everywhere. And so that's what we're doing today. We're doing a walkthrough of my song, Deja Vu. So here's the deal with it. The project is massive, way too big. It, I can't even play the track. So what I did with this song, which is what I do with all my recent songs, is I bounced out every single stem, put them in a new project, finished it off there, mixed it there. And so that's what we're gonna look at today is that project, because I wouldn't be able to play any of the parts on the other project, it's just way too big, and my CPU just cannot handle it. So I'm gonna show you all the parts in the song. There's a lot of cool stuff going on. I'm gonna show you my process for the mixing session and what I'm doing to each channel and kind of finalizing this track and making it a finished song. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, guys, here's the project in all of its glory. You know what? It's good to be back. It's good to be doing this. Yeah, I'm glad we're here. So first, let me show you what we got going on here. We got lots of tracks. I like to organize them, splitting up all the drums, all the percussive elements, all of the vocals, vocal effects. There's a lot of them on this project, guitars bass, chords, SFX, automation. It's a lot, it's a lot, but it's worth it. I think, I hope. Is it worth it? Should I be producing? Yeah, we're good. Let's, let's just keep going. So I'm just gonna kinda like play this around a little bit and I'll just show you some of the elements that we got going on. So that's the intro here. I actually, for those of you who want to know, the original demo was with Annalise's vocal on it. So I can play some of that in a bit, just if you're curious to hear it. But I kind of got all the v ideas down in the song with her vocals, and then I had Taji record the uh, final vocals. I don't know why that was so hard. And basically just copied everything. We got this like deja vu thing. And just lots of reverb on here, Valhalla Room. All the Valhalla ones are awesome. It's just super wet, this is it dry. It's actually a copy of the lead vocal with all the processing. I actually process all my vocals in a separate project uh, cause that's a whole different thing. But then I just wanted to add it really spaced out and reverby so I just have some EQs and then reverb, some filtering. That's a nice spacey intro kind of sound. There's this thing. which is a pitched up octave of the drop melody. I just like to do that at the beginning of a song just because it's cool to kind of like introduce the melody that's coming later, but do it in a different way. Uh, so I think that's kind of a cool technique that I like to use a lot. So those are the vocal effect things happening. There's also this thing, which happens later, which is just like a ooh kind of vocal thing with some formant and distortion and filtering and reverb and side chain compression, ducking it. It's a technique that I like to use in a lot of my songs. And that's Annalise's voice just filtered out. Makes a cool thing. Filtered guitars, these are like the main guitars. What that is is two different layers that I made, um, like a higher guitar and a lower guitar. You can kind of hear them. And I just kind of have them together and they're filtered in the beginning of the song. Halfway through, we got a re-space coming in. A re-space is just like a fat, wide, just like detuned bass kind of thing. We got Rhodes. These SFX. First one rewrite. I don't know. I feel like can't, I might sing a little bit, but let me know. So that's actually Annalisa talking in a voice memo. When we were co-writing this song, we were doing it over the, the internet and she was giving me some ideas and I took her voice memo and like filtered it because it sounded cool, like a reminiscent sounding like telephone recording. You can't make out what the words are so they don't matter. So she's talking about verse one rewrite. Verse one rewrite. I don't know. I feel like can't, I might sing a little bit. Yeah, I just kind of like chopped it up. You can just faintly hear it and you can't hear what she's saying, but that was kind of a cool thing. For percussion, we got this stuff. 
So we got the tabla sound, which is a common theme throughout this song. And then I use engineer's filter, which is a free filter, just to get that like really thin filtered sound. And yeah, that's the intro. Just super simple, just the guitar, guitar and vocal. And then we have some cool like vocal effects. I really wanted to create some really cool space in this song for, for just interesting sounding background vocal things. And this is just done by me taking, I think that was actually my voice maybe, because I liked that melody in my head. Dun, dun, dun. And that's just pitched up, distorted, filtered, reverbed, just a bunch of effects on there. I have this whole project organized, so I have them all routed, like all of these vocal effects channels, I have them routed to, to the mixer channels and they're all color coded. I wanted to make this more interesting by adding some saturation to it. So without that saturation, it's that. And then with it, it just makes it grittier. And this is another free plugin, Soft Tube Saturation Knob. Um, I'm obsessed. You should get it if you don't have it already. Nice little acoustic guitar action. Use my own acoustic for that. Uh, Martin guitar. And then this respace. I really love those notes. And then uh, right here we have this guitar and Rhodes. So those together kind of fill it out. And these are just the stock Rhodes from FL Studio. If you go up here to like FL Packs, instruments, keyboards, Rhodes, I use them all the time. They're great. Um, a little impact there. So it's just a simple build in the in the first verse. We got that guitar at first. And then this piano and Rhodes comes in. And then these claps. And the kick, of course. Uh, let me show you what Annalise's vocal was, just because it's interesting. It's too late to apologize. And there's no way you can say that we fine. Should have known how to read the signs. Yeah, so awesome. We love Annalisa over here. So a common theme of this song was I actually drew inspiration from Indian and Bollywood music. I just love experimenting with different beats and different drum sounds. So that was where I was pulling from for the inspiration of the song. And so like all, all the drum fills were just like Indian loops that I found that I like added OTT to and just to make them more like intense sounding. So like that was kind of the theme of this song was thinking about it from Indian inspired soundscape. Yeah, I just felt like it kind of made this whole song and the concept and everything kind of come together and feel like mysterious. So here we are at the chorus. So you'll notice the guitar opens up from the filter. So we got that nice like spaced out open chorus that we were kind of like developing through the production and then the re-space underneath it and then open up the, the piano too. Rhodes again. Kind of just the same elements but just like unfiltered. And then on top of that we got a snap. Then we got this like build up big drums thing. And then this drumline type snare. And then this kick comes in here. Like kind of a subtle build, not like a huge EDM build or anything. So then we got this like crazy break section where it doesn't go straight into the drop. It like has this extra bar. And uh, I'll just kind of show you what some of these sounds are going on here. We got... Yeah. These are all consolidated tracks because, like I said, the project was too big. And then it reverses back in with distortion on it. This, like, formatted deja kind of thing. Reverse crash. 
And then that really loud um, like ding sample, which is traditionally like used in Indian music because I found it in like the India um, Native Instruments pack. And then of course there's that drum fill. Just more Indian drums there. So that kind of break makes it kind of unique and kind of throws you off quite a bit. And then this drop hits, which throws you off a lot because the beat that I made with the drop is very irregular. I haven't heard any other songs using it, so I'm pretty proud of it. It's like, which for EDM at least, like you're not really using that beat at all. It's kind of confusing for some people, but I just felt like it works with the this song. Like Deja Vu is such a confusing feeling. And so with this section here, it's like throws you off and just like Deja Vu kind of does. This vocal too, a cool thing that I did that a lot of people probably won't notice unless I show you. Like this doubled layer right here. If you can hear, it's like a little bit detuned and like flat. And it happens kind of like after the vocal. So it just kind of sounds like a spinny, like weird, like if you're watching a movie and someone gets hit in the head and like they're like seeing doubles and stuff. That's what I wanted it to feel like. So it's like a deja vu, how it's like kind of messes with your brain a little bit. And then we explode into the drop. So yeah, let's dive into this drop a little bit. It's, there's a lot going on. Let's just start with the drums so I can show you guys what those sound like. Like I said, it's an irregular beat and I have the snare, which is a mixture of that, a tabla, and another clap. So the kick here is this with this kick top. And then we have this cool Indian loop. So yeah, I just thought that beat sounded really cool and like a lot different than other EDM music. Just some hats and a cool shaker sound. So yeah, that's what's going on with the um, the drums. I'm just doing like some cool mixing stuff. Like I added some, this is what the kick sounded like before any effects. And I just to add more character to it, some fruity distortion, an EQ. La Petite Excite, another free plugin, just exciting the high end for mixing purposes, more EQ. Yeah, that's what I'm doing with these mixing projects is I'm, I'm bouncing down all the stems, laying them out, organizing them, and then just doing final EQ and some distortion and compression, anything to make the mix more interesting and to take it to the next level. So that's kind of an approach that I take to my productions. So here we have these instruments. So it's like boom. I wanted to have all the instruments hit after the beat. And the different layers we have here is a synth, another synth, and then Rhodes. The thing that these all have in common is they don't have high frequencies that are like distracting. It's all like very clear sounding, just mid range. So it's not taking up space in the high end. So I have all the high end, it has room for other things like this SFX. I have some high end in this, this bass. And then there's a sub here. And if you see in this project, there really aren't that many instruments going on. Like, it's mostly a bunch of drum tracks and a bunch of vocal stuff. The vocals carry a lot of this song. These effects here, just kind of like a nice atmospheric layer on top of this whole drop. And then we have this layer, which is my voice with a ton of OTT on it. So I wanted all the instruments to kind of carry the mid range and everything. And then I wanted the vocals and things to carry the high frequencies, which is Annalise's voice. And then Annalise's voice with a vocoder. And then with the instruments, it sounds like this. The prize of the drop, the vocal chop. And as you can hear, there's tons of high end in that too. So that's like, well, let's take like taking care of all the high end of this drop. There's so much OTT on it and distortion and everything. 
It's actually like a bunch of reverse sounds from at the beginning that she sang. And I kind of like reversed it and grabbed little parts and created this melody from that. And then I have these like reverb sends that like I automate going into the spaces. I did some mixing on here. I added some Soothe, which is a little bit expensive, but it's like a compressor that like smart compresses the high frequencies so that it makes it less harsh. And so all that stuff comes together. There's also some cool elements like just like side chained and formatted little phrases that I added in there. And then kind of my classic signature, like out of drop kind of thing, which I've showed in other videos. It's like taking an LFO, a volume on a reverb track or something and having the volume go or the speed go from really fast to like slower. So yeah, that's the drop. Um, a lot going on, a lot of pieces that are perfectly strategized. It took me a long time to make that. Um, I'll kind of briefly hit these other parts because they're kind of just a little bit similar, just adding some new vocal effects and stuff. Did you even come home tonight? Is every word that you say a lie? You're telling me you made a big mistake. This is some more of my own vocals. I don't want things to get boring, so I add some new elements to different sections for the second verse and second pre-chorus, some new beats, adding some more loops to this section. Kind of like a similar beat to the drop, added this like extra distortion to the kick. Just kind of trying to switch things up a little bit. The second chorus is really similar, just with some subtle differences. And then the second drop is twice as long. I just add more elements to the second half to keep it interesting. Another one, which is guitar in the second half. It sounds kind of like a violin to me, but it's a guitar that I think I pitched up and like added a bunch of reverb to and like reverse or something. I don't know. It sounds really sick. It just adds more space and more... Um, energy and brings the second drop to the next level. So then quickly here, the bridge changes the chord progression with a guitar. I have this other vocal melody from me. That added a lot to the bridge for me. Nice little build up here. The piano is becoming unfiltered. Yeah, and this last drop is more of like a Latin type recognizable beat. Boom, tica, tica, boom. I just wanted to be, feel more spaced out and anthemic sounding and less confusing just to kind of bring this song just to a climax. And I have some extra layers that I added to just like sustained elements so that it's not so choppy, it's like filled out. This guitar again. This time some acoustic. The bass is now sustained and consistent. And now I have this just like really nice sustained piano. a bunch of atmospheric pads and high high sounding synths just to bring that energy to the absolute um, climax of the song yeah i was super proud of this um outro i feel like it just kind of came out really fast and had a lot of like really beautiful atmospheric and just interesting sounds it was very inspired by ember island which is one of my favorite indie bands 
They just have so many cool, very feely, very beautiful sounding like atmospheric stuff. So. So yeah, I have like, that really sounds Ember Islandy to me. Um, that guitar goes out, that like one five, like nice thing with the uh, acoustic layered with it. And then we have this layer right here, which sounds like rain but actually it's like vegetables cooking on my stove. I just recorded with my iPhone and it, it's sizzling, it's literally sizzling food, but it sounds like rain. And I thought it'd be kind of funny to put it in there. Yeah, these are just some like Omnisphere pads that I recorded with cool high frequency stuff happening. It's just a very emotional ending to the song. And um, it always, I think it's my favorite part of the song, honestly. And the song ends. That's uh, that's deja vu. Yeah, I really hope you like that walkthrough of, I keep almost saying walk away. Deja vu. I mean, walk away is a thing too. You can listen to that as well. But this song is available everywhere on my YouTube, on Spotify, everywhere. Go listen to it if you like it. I just wanted to show you guys what it looks like and how I finished the song and what my project looks like. Hopefully you learned something from hearing the individual tracks and kind of what goes behind a song like this. Again, I really love being able to show you guys this stuff. I'm so thankful for you guys. If you're looking for a community of producers, join my Discord server, make friends there where it's a super fun time. You can hang out with other producers. I talk to you guys. Just love strengthening this community of producers. If you aren't already a fan of my music, would love it if you checked it out. I think you might like it if you like this song especially. So support me by listening to my music. Share it with your friends. Um, follow me on other socials if you want to keep updated, like Instagram. And yeah, that's, that's all I got. Oh, oh, you thought I was going to forget? Nah. If you're not already subscribed, dude, subscribe. It's not that hard. And now we're done. Peace. Peace.